for watching Numbskull News. And today, I'm going to talk about possible Big 12 ads, but not the usual fare. The usual stuff that we talk about, you know, Louisville, uh, Virginia Tech, NC State, things like that. You know, Pitt. Even though the viewership is kind of suspect with Pitt, I do understand the backyard brawl. It's, you know, it's a big time rivalry. Gets good ratings. So I'm not going to talk about them either. What I'm going to talk about is more of your, uh, how should I word this? Your, your underdog ads. All right. Teams that, you know, don't get talked about near as much. Or maybe some that do, but, you know, not seriously. So, let's discuss. And I'm going to use a visual aid to kind of rank everything in proper order. Let's start with Oregon State and Washington State. Now, automatically I'm putting them on the D tier. There's a chance maybe one day with the Big 12, but I, I don't see that happening anytime soon. And look, we all like them. All right, we, we think they'd be positive ads to the Big 12. However, I don't think ESPN or Fox are overly excited about them coming to the Big 12. They may never get in because of that. Let's just put it out there like that. And there's been a multitude uh, of different athletic directors within the Big 12 that, you know, like Oregon State and Washington State. But it doesn't seem like there's much... That can be done. So I'm going to leave a small option for the future, but I don't think it's uh, anything too grandiose, let's say. Now, I included Stanford and Cal in this because I fully expect the ACC to fade away. Crap's going to go down. Uh, more than likely, they'll join Washington State and Oregon State, Stanford and Cal, and... Do something with the Mountain West, possibly. That's more than that's more than likely what's going to happen. However, I'm going to leave the door just slightly cracked, a little light coming through it for Stanford and Cal. I personally have don't think I, I want to put them in the F tier, but realignment is a it's a crazy mistress, man. You never know when she's going to show up and knock on the door. That's all I'm saying. All right, and if you think about a world one day. Where Notre Dame wants to stay independent and works out the same kind of deal they have with the ACC with the Big 12. What happens? They say, yeah, we want to do that, but we want Stanford and Cal. Then you have a dilemma. So that, that's maybe that never happens. Maybe that conversation never happens. I'm just going to, like I said, leave the door cracked because you never know. All right, now let's get to UConn. Back-to-back -back national champions. The women's are freaking awesome as well. This, I mean, both. The, the men's and the women's side of their basketball program. Blue Bloods. The football, eh, you know, it's independent. No one watches it. Uh, if you add them, you may have to add the football. All right, that's the downside to that. Uh, could it be something better than it, what it is as far as football goes? It, you know, if you want to look at it glass half full, possibly. Uh, however, how do I feel about adding UConn? To me, it's an absolute freaking no-brainer. Okay, take the damn football team. We'll figure it out. Maybe... They don't get a full share in football for a long time. I, I don't know what kind of deal you work out. This is a big time, highly relevant blue blood program in both men's and women's basketball. The men's side, you're talking about the second revenue generator in all of college sports. Women's basketball is on the rise. It just is. The ratings, now I know a lot of that's Caitlin Clark, but... Long before her, it's been going up. So, and that's what all the experts say. Women's sports is getting more and more interest. So, I think they are the number one ad outside of those ACC schools. We're not talking about, you know, ahead of Louisville, ahead of Virginia Tech or NC State 
possibly UNC, possibly Miami, possibly whatever. I'm not saying above them. I'm just saying as far as these outliers, uh, they are the top ad. And if you want to break away, <laughs> I hate that term. But if you want to, how about this? Have you want to splinter off basketball from football rights and get a separate deal for your basketball, UConn, it's a must. And here comes Duke. And a lot of, and I did a whole video on Duke. Y'all know where I stand with Duke. This is yet another blue blood basketball program. And in case you're wondering, there's only about five or six blue blood basketball programs in the NCAA. You got one of them in Kansas. One day we may be talking Houston or Arizona as a blue blood. Uh, Duke already is that, just like UConn. And unlike UConn, this past year, oh, people watched Duke over a million viewers per week. Outstanding banner year. I know that's not the norm for Duke. But what it shows me is when they're good, when they're playing competitive football, they draw eyeballs. S-tier ad all the way. Don't doubt it. Look, the best course of action for the Big 12 is to make this a giant as far as basketball goes. This is how you do it. These are the kind of ads you need to have. We're, we're, we're a fun football conference. We're never going to be the SEC or the Big 10. We're never going to get those ratings. We're never going to get those eyeballs. All right, stop. You know, get your head out of the clouds there. Well, we could be a juggernaut in basketball. This is how you do that. Let's talk Georgia Tech for a minute. Now, I looked up the ratings. And I, I <clears throat> they can go from really shitty to actually pretty respectable. The last two years, between 800, 900,000 viewers per week. And that's on a team that's not the greatest. But you can easily see, especially with the market they're in. Now, I, I don't, I'm not one of these people that think market is a super huge factor in realignment anymore. I don't believe that. It's what you can draw. Okay. I mean, look at the look at the kind of ratings Clemson gets in a small market. Georgia Tech, much bigger market, but they don't get those ratings. They get about half. But is there room for growth? There absolutely is. Now, I struggle between A tier and B tier here. I went ahead and put Georgia Tech on the A tier. A lot of this does have to do with market, even though I don't think that's necessarily important in realignment anymore. Not as important as it once was. But it is an indicator to how much potential a program can have. Like, you're, you're going to have a pretty high floor. That's one of the things you're looking for. Now, Georgia Tech, like I said, you know, like 2021, just balls ratings, bad. But last couple of years, respectable ratings. You can easily see. They have a breakout year. They will get north of a million. Now, I'm going to surprise you guys with this, but Syracuse, as far as ratings go, they're right there with Georgia Tech. Almost every single year. What do they have in common? You know, pretty good basketball programs. Now, Georgia Tech, uh, that may be questionable. But Syracuse, generally speaking, has a pretty good history in basketball. But as far as football goes, neither program has really been killing it. But they have the ability to get decent ratings. So I can only imagine if they put forth a nine win season in the big 12. I do believe both these programs can go north of a million viewers. So for a lot of the same reasons, I think Syracuse deserves to be on the A tier people. Shocking. I know. Now let's talk about San Diego state, the Aztecs. Now last year in realignment, this school was talked about non-stop at nauseum as far as Pac-12, Big 12, 
if you listen to Monty, you, you thought for sure they were going to one of those conferences. Everybody was fighting over them. Well, they're in the Mountain West. They're in the Mountain West. They're not leaving the Mountain West. They're not coming to the Big 12. It's just, it's not a possibility. You know, and I think a lot of that has to do with them being in California. The whack jobs that run that state. (laughs) It's just an absolute nightmare. I'm a Big 12 fan. I don't want anything to do with a California school. I really don't. So I kind of use San Diego State as kind of a representation for anyone else out there. Fresno State, whatever. Um, Now, also, I think there's other Mountain West schools that just aren't going to have a chance in the Big 12 or getting to the Big 12. Boise State, Colorado State, UNLV. Uh, and look, there's, there's some intrigue with all of those. And I really like Boise State. I really do. But, you know, with the ads we have now in BYU, Utah, I don't see that ever happening. I don't think the Big 12 goes west again, period. Except for the mighty Gonzaga. I think that's still in play. It could absolutely happen. Now, they're not a blue blood. I would say they're kind of adjacent to that. Um, I read an article once that listed all the value of all, you know, kind of like ranked every single program in, in FBS, uh, major college basketball. And Gonzaga didn't make the blue blood section, but I agree. They kind of had a, the, the next tier down, they had them in between, in between those tiers. So they're not, they're better than the next tier down, but they're not blue blood. So they're a tweener. They have their own little level in between. That's Gonzaga. You let them win a national title one day. They will just won their blue blood status. They've been that damn good. They've been that damn good. Going all the way up to the Northeast, it is a problem. One of the reasons Oregon State and Washington State, one of the many on why they're not in the Big 12 right now and may never get in. So this is a hindrance for Gonzaga. If they ever pull their head out of their ass, and join the Big 12 in basketball only, men's and women's, then then this will happen. I say it's it's a superstar, top-tier ad for the Big 12. And just like I did with San Diego State, I'm going to use Memphis as kind of uh, an example of an American school, talking South Florida, talking Tulane, uh, Rice, UTSA, a lot of these programs have a lot to offer the Big 12. I just don't think we're going there. When we expand, it's going to be, it's going to be with the ACC. And when you look up here, as far as basketball only, possibly UConn, possibly Gonzaga, I think that's the, and by the way, I'm still a proponent for merging with the Big East, some kind of merger. Doesn't have to be a full merger, whatever you want to call it. But something like that is definitely on the table. Memphis, you know, I didn't want to disrespect. I didn't want to disrespect Memphis and South Florida and a a lot of these American schools. I like a lot of them. I do, but they're, they're not additive, unfortunately. That's why I think they're going to get passed over by the Big 12 and... When the ACC goes away, you know, it may reconstitute, rebrand, merge with the American. That's, I think something like that, that's future for those schools, for those American schools. It won't be the Big 12. But I do like them, so I, I wanted to, you know, at least give them D tier. Come on. And finally, let me go ahead and talk SMU. About to play their first year in the ACC, and it's going to be one of their last years. It's it's a sad story, sad state of affairs. 
and it, it's going to be sad watching them, you know, uh, essentially go hat in hand back to the, to the American, but that's what's going to happen eventually. So enjoy your time amongst the power schools because that's going to fade away. Their only chance of staying in a power conference once that happens, once what happens to the ACC happens, is going to be a move to the Big 12. Now, at that point, SMU will have been a power school, but so is Oregon State and Washington State. They've, they've been in the Pac-12 forever. Didn't get in. And right now, we don't know what kind of ratings draw SMU is going to be in the big, in, in, sorry, in the ACC. Is it going to be great? I don't know. I, I, I'm assuming somewhere around five to 600,000 weekly viewers in the ACC. We'll see if they can do that because I've looked up the ratings. I've seen ACC schools in the 200 thousands. All right. I've seen some real bad shit. So, but having said that, I, I just don't see a future with the big 12 with SMU unless, you know, Dallas really shows up for them in the next couple of years. I don't see that happening at all. All right, guys, I mean, if I miss somebody, if there's, you know, I mean, I'm talking a legit school. You know, if you want to ask me about Wake Forest, not happening. If you want to ask me about Boston College, I didn't include them. I almost did, almost did, but I'm like, there's a lot of Washington State in Boston College. I, I just don't, I think there's other ads well above them. At that point, you would need a full Big 12 ACC merger for those two schools. I don't see it happening. And I've been a proponent for that. Part of me would still like to see it. But the reality of it, I, I think I've been properly convinced it's that's not going to happen. Chances are the Big East merger with the Big 12 won't happen either. But I'm still going to push for it. Because... Biggest and best and brightest future for the Big 12 is focusing more on what we get with basketball and then split that off, have its own separate media deal. That's been the one of the best ideas for growth and future revenue potential for the Big 12. That's where it's at. But I'm sure in the comments you'll let me know how I got all of this wrong, wrong order, wrong everything. And that's fine. That's what the comments are for. Let me know. And like I said, if, if I, if I miss somebody, if you're telling me I missed ball state, if you think I missed somebody, let me know. But I really don't think I did. I think those are the only I think I covered pretty much everything there that could possibly be covered. That can possibly have even a minute chance of getting into the Big 12. No offense to anybody. Hey, no offense to Ball State. Hey, I'm a Jason Whitlock fan. <laughs> anyway, that's all I got on this crap. And I'll be back with some other crap later. Bye.